What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. I'm going to be showing off my top four match against Finnegan Lynch in the 2017 Retro Format Tournament hosted by Pokestats. Finnegan Lynch is playing his Espeon GX Garbodor deck against me with my Drampa GX Zorak deck. Finn is going to be playing first in this match. He opens his Eevee with the Energy Evolution ability. So if he just attaches a basic energy from his hand to that Eevee like that, he can search his deck for an Espeon GX and Evolve, but he fails, which is showing me that maybe his Espeon GX is prized or maybe they're all in his hand. So I give him a little wow face there. Like, where's your Espeon GX? Attaching that energy gives him the opportunity to immediately evolve, but not going for that evolution there out of the deck does give me some information about what might be missing out of Finn's deck, which would be absolutely huge. My opening hand here is pretty strong, and I open with Oracorio with the Revelation Dance Attack. The Revelation Dance Attack does just 30 damage, and if there's no Stadium card in play, the attack does nothing. So I'm going to have to find a Stadium card in order to launch that Revelation Dance Attack, but we do also play Choice Bands in the deck. So if I find a Stadium and find a Choice Band Revelation Dance, it's going to be doing 60 damage for just one energy, and Espeon GX is weak to Psychic. So that Revelation Dance could come in handy. Usually, you're just using this Oracorio for the Supernatural, Natural dance attack there, which allows you to place a damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon for each Pokemon in their discard pile. It's great for cleaning up uh, Pokemon that just have a little amount of HP remaining at the end of the game, but that Revelation dance attack could be pretty good for kicking this game off. Now, with an energy on the EV, I also have an opportunity to just go in with Tapu Lele GX and just energy drive for knockout on the EV, if I decide to do that, I've got the Floatstone in my hand and bridge it. So I can set my board up, grab a bunch of Zeruas, and that would be a very strong opener for me if I decide to go that route, being that I do have the Floatstone and the Double Colorless Energy already in my hand. I can just prevent that EV from making its way into uh, into an Espeon GX. Now, I'm trying to remember if that's the play I end up going for. I might just kind of beeline for Drampa here. Uh, but no, actually, yeah, I go for the Eevee. I really like this aggressive play with the energy drive, just knocking out the Eevee right away and really punishing Finn for going for that early energy evolution and missing it. So we're getting some great momentum here with the Tapu Lele GX. Finnegan has to promote his Drampa GX, which can respond with Righteous Edge and remove the DCE that I have attached to my Tapu Lele GX, but it's definitely worth it there, taking that little boost in momentum, knocking out the Eevee before it can evolve into Espeon GX. And sure enough, we see Finnegan discarding that Espeon GX off the Ultra Ball, which is why he was not able to use that energy evolution to instantly evolve the EV on turn one. The energy evolution ability makes it so that when you attach an energy card from your hand to that EV, you could search your deck for an evolution from EV and put it directly onto the EV. But if the Pokemon is in your hand, you actually cannot target it. It has to be in the deck. So unfortunate circumstances there for Finnegan starting the game. We can see that he's got two Tapu Lele GX on his board and only one Trubbish. No Garbotoxin Garbodor coming into play yet, which is really good for me because I'm going to want to use that stand-in ability on Zork to come into the active position. As you can see, putting a double colorless energy onto my Zerua, just hoping to find a Zorark here off an end to five. And we've got a crucial whiff. In fact, I've got just about nothing else. I can bench a, the Oranguru, put a Choice Band down, put a Floatstone down, and maybe instruct for one card. But it hardly seems worth it considering that I know that Finnegan is going to be setting up uh, that Garbotoxin Garbodor. So the Oranguru's instructability is not going to be something that I get a lot of action with. Now that end was very bad for me. And now Finnegan is 
kind of taking the upper hand as far as the momentum goes. He's got an energy already on the Drampa, which means that if he finds a double colorless energy, he's going to start to use that Berserk attack. And if he's able to get any damage onto his benched Pokemon, we see he's got the DC on the Drampa GX. He's got that Garbotoxin Garbodor evolved on his bench as well, which is going to shut down all abilities from working. I decided to retreat my Tapu Lele GX into Oracorio because with Tapu Lele GX already having 20 damage on it, a Berserk for 150 damage would knock out that Tapu Lele GX immediately. So if a Pokemon's going to get knocked out, I kind of want it to be Oracorio. I think Oracorio is going to be the best choice to sacrifice here in this situation. Now, I do have a draw supporter ready to go in my hand, but I'm going to try to reduce the amount of item cards I allow in the discard pile. We see, we did see that Finnegan was able to get that field blower, throwing both my float stones into the discard pile. That was definitely a feel bad. And with Garbotoxin in play now, uh, even though I've got both of these Zoroarks in my hand, I don't have a great way to launch an attack and I don't have a great way to draw out of this suboptimal hand as well. So we might just see an energy drop go on to the Drampa GX and a pass. Using Revelation Dance for 30 feels really bad. Uh, it looks like I'm also considering keeping the Darkness Energy because with that Ultra Ball in hand, what I can do is if Finnegan takes a knockout on this Oracorio, I can Ultra Ball for a Zorark Break. And if I get to keep that Choice Ban on my Bench Zorark, Zorark Break can copy Berserk. Does 150 damage plus the 30 from Choice Ban. I'm going to be able to take a surprise one-hit KO on this Drampa GX. And with only a three-card hand, I'm betting that Finnegan probably does not think that I have that combo of cards in order to take the knockout out on Drampa GX. So I'm kind of wagering that we're going to be able to kick it into uh, high gear there with that darkness attachment. Sure enough, we're getting punished for that line uh, with an N, uh, but I do find a darkness energy again, so it's no problem. Uh, another play would have been to just drop that darkness energy onto the Drampa GX, but I liked holding the darkness energy because it gave me the option to go for the Zorark Break, and Zorark Break is going to be really powerful against Finnegan's board right now. We're noticing that Finnegan is not really benching a lot of Pokemon. I think that Finnegan is trying to play around the fact that I've got all of these Zorak set up with a Mind Jack attack. A Mind Jack does more damage for the amount of bench Pokemon that my opponent has in play. It does 10 damage plus 30 more for each bench Pokemon. So as it is right now, Finnegan has three bench Pokemon. So I'm dealing 100 base damage with Mind Jack plus the Choice Band is 130 damage to Pokemon GX. Now, Finnegan put me in a little bit of a tough spot by retreating his Drampa GX. I'm not going to be able to punish that Drampa then with my Mind Jack, uh, or not my Mind Jack, with my Foul Play Zorak. So instead, I decide to promote Drampa here and just going for Professor Kakui, trying to grow my hand a little bit, see if I can get any other options. Getting the energy onto the Drampa GX definitely gives me some good momentum, and using Righteous Edge to remove this double colorless I feel like is very strong, especially since Finnegan retreated that double colorless energy off of his own Drampa, kind of removing that uh, wind in his own sails with the retreat. So now Finnegan is working with the fact that he's lost two double colorless energy in two turns. So that's pretty substantial. One due to his own retreat, now another because of Righteous Edge. So that is going to, I think, swing the momentum of this match back into my favor. If we take a look at the board positions right now, I get Zorark Break into play, which is huge. Just having that threat uh, constantly in play. 140 HP non-GX Pokemon is very big in this game. Now, this is actually a great play from Finn. Having the third DCE already in his hand and the float stone means that he's going to be able to retreat this Tapu Lele GX now that it has sustained some damage. And now he is powered up for his own Berserk for one hit KO. So sure enough, I played right into it. I didn't really have an option though. Finnegan, by retreating that Drampa GX, put me in a position where now I have damaged his Tapu Lele GX. He's going to be able to retreat that Tapu Lele straight to his bench and punish me with a fully powered Berserk attack. Now, that was a really heads up call there by Finn. I did not think that Finn was going to have the third DCE and the Float Stone in his hand to pull this combo off, but sure enough, he had it just like that in his hand. It was ready to respond. Now, that being 
being said, Finnegan is going to be coming into the active with his Drampa GX, only ending me to five. And he is definitely going to take the lead and momentum here, but it could be temporary. I've got double darkness energy in my five card hand right now and that fully powered Sorark break ready to go with the choice ban, which is going to be able to respond to the Drampa GX with another one hit KO. And Finnegan doesn't have any other attackers powered up on his bench. So even though Finnegan's going to take the lead in prizes here, I still have the lead as far as board position goes because I have plenty of other attackers to back up this Zorark break. Even if the Zorark break were to go down somehow, which Finnegan does not have any attacker on his board, which can easily dispose of this Zorark break. But even if the Zorark break were to go down, I still have two other potential attackers on my bench, while Finnegan just has two Tapu Lele GX. Now, Tapu Lele GX obviously can energy drive. It's a pretty good attack. It does 20 damage for each energy attached to both Tapu Lele GX and the defending Pokemon. However, this is Finnegan's third double colorless energy. So Finnegan only has one more double colorless energy left in the deck. Trying to eye up which supporter to play this turn. And if it's worth it to use this Ultra Ball to, or maybe Rescue Stretcher to get another Pokemon into play. And I think I decide that yes, it is good to do that. Getting a Drampa GX onto the bench is very strong. And I only have to play one item card to get that Drampa GX there. So I really like that. Instead of using Ultra Ball to go get a different attacker, uh, really being able to limit the amount of items that I have in the discard pile in case Finnegan does manage to set up a trash -a lanch Garbodor. And trash -a lanch Garbodor does 20 more damage for each item card that I have in my discard pile. And I've been very careful and able to play around the amount of items that I have in my own discard pile, knowing that that's going to be a key component of Finnegan's deck. Now we're tied at three to three prizes. I definitely have the advantage as far as energy attachments go. I have three energy on my board to Finnegan's zero. And I also have the advantage as far as attackers go. Finnegan's Garbotoxin Garbodor has not been as disruptive as it has needed to been uh, needed to be so far as far as my attacker flow goes. I think that the Espeon, Drampa, Garbodor deck really wants to inhibit my attacks. It really wants to make it so that I dead draw at some point. But this list that we're rocking with right here uh, really churns through the deck, has a high supporter count. So I don't really need to rely on using Tapu Lele GX's Wonder Tag in order to draw out of dead draw situations. And we see Finnegan retreating into the Garbotoxin Garbodor. You love to see that. Anytime that there's a desperation retreat into Garbodor, where Finnegan is saying, please just knock out my own Garbodor. Give me my abilities back. Give me a free turn to attach an energy to Tapu Lele GX. That's going to be some huge momentum for us. Not only that, knocking out this Garbodor will bring me down to just two prizes remaining, making it so that all I have to do is knock out Tapu Lele GX for game. So the weird thing about this Garbodor being in the active is that I do not have a great way to KO it. It might be a two-hit KO. So I might have to use Mind Jack for 70, or I could copy Garbodor's offensive bomb attack with foul play. I do think that dropping the Darkness Energy onto the Drampa GX is going to be just the best play for me here, and I don't really want to use Sycamore. I'm like considering it, maybe Hex Maniac, uh, just to get it into the discard pile. I think using the Hex Maniac there is a good play, just in case Finn were to find a way out of his own Garbotoxin lock. That way it just makes it so that he cannot use any abilities next turn, even if he removes his own Floatstone from the Garbodor. And it also makes it so that if Finnegan were to use an N to set me back to three cards, I won't be drawing into that Hex Maniac again. So I really like kind of keeping the double colorless energy in my hand. There's definitely an argument for, yeah, I didn't want to use Professor Sycamore at all because getting rid of that double colorless energy, that's a huge resource. We don't want to ditch that. Uh, as you can see in this kind of match, every single energy drop is a huge deal. So you cannot go just, you know, discarding your energy every turn. This particular list only plays 10 energy cards. So the special energy are really meaningful. And those double colorless energies are the most important energy because they unlock a lot of your most powerful attacks for just one energy attachment. And we see the Finnegan is going in with his energy drive, having to deal 100 damage to my Zorark break. 
And sure enough, I have the double colorless energy for my Drampa GX. We're just gonna swing in and berserk for knockout. At this point, I am okay. I'm in the clear to just play as many item, trainer cards, whatever uh, that I can. I just wanna make it so that if Finnegan ends me to one, that I have the highest probability of drawing into a win condition. And you can see, I decided to bench that Supernatural Dance or Choreo again. I've got my eyes on that Garbotoxin Garbodor on Finnegan's bench. It's only got 30 HP remaining. We berserk here, huge numbers, 180 damage, one hit KOing the Tapu Lele GX. And even if Finnegan ends me to one, all I have to do is get an energy onto the Oracorio and announce Supernatural Dance. Finnegan has got more than three Pokemon in his discard pile, so I will be able to Supernatural Dance for at least the three damage counters that I need in order to KO this Garbodor. We see Finnegan deciding to concede here. Definitely a good game. Moving on to game two of this top four match. Finnegan is going to be playing first in game two. We see I open Drampa GX to his Eevee, and maybe we'll get to see that energy evolution come into play this game. I open a very good strong opening hand with Bridget and and Professor Kukui as well as an Ultra Ball. It's actually a little bit of a weird opening hand because even though I've got the Bridget, which can allow me to set up multiple Zerua early on, which can be a very strong way to open the game, I do not have an energy attachment. And with Drampa GX, you really want to get an energy attachment on the first turn of the game so that you can threaten a turn to Berserk. Getting the turn two Berserk is going to be everything as far as the momentum of this match is concerned because it's going to allow me to start belting out attacks for 150, 180 damages early as the second turn of the game, which is a lot of pressure to deal with, especially when I don't have many items in my own discard pile for Finnegan's trash a lanch to be able to take advantage of. Now we see Finn going for the Tapu Lele GX, finds Bridget, is going to set up some Pokemon. Last game, Finn did not play many Pokemon. It looks like Finn is going for the same strategy, really trying to pair his own bench down and not setting up a full bench of Trubbishes. Now that is a double-edged sword setting up a board this way. Last game, it didn't really work out. Finn did not have those trash lanches at the end of the game to be able to trade with my Zorix. It also... Uh, Finn, once he got his Drampa knocked out, did not have any real strong attackers to be able to back that Drampa up. And it looks like Finn is going for more or less the same strategy here. Double colorless energy on the Drampa GX, looking to get a turn to Berserk. Now I top deck the Team Magma Secret Base and I'm considering putting it down, but I don't really want to put it down because if I put the Team Magma Secret Base down, then I give Finnegan the option to deal a 150, 180 damage Berserk on turn two. And I don't want to just give Finn that option because I do not want my Drampa GX to get knocked out. Now, it looks like I opt for the safe route here, and I think that this is okay. I decide to go for the Bridget, and I'm just going to set up a bunch of Zeruas, and we're going to slap Turtonator down as well. Turtonator can do some stuff. Shell Trap for just a double colorless energy, so that feels pretty good. But I intentionally decide to hold that Team Magma Secret Base. Now I've got Ultra Ball in my hand and can potentially stand in, use Zorark on turn two to... Put some pressure onto Finn's board, and I think that that is just the safest route for me to take. If I had Ultra Balled for Zerua and use N, you never know what kind of stuff you're going to draw. Also, one energy for Drampa wasn't going to be able to put the most amount of pressure onto Finn this turn. With just an Eevee there, the Eevee doesn't have any energy invested. It's not like there's a special energy for Righteous Edge to remove. Now, we see the Finn goes for a Professor Sycamore there, discards the Flareon, which helps in this deck's fire match, or not fire matchup, but fire weak matchup, like Metagross GX or Decidueye, right? Allows the stage ones to take on a fire typing. And the energy evolution comes into play. So there's that Espeon GX. It's got the Psybeam attack, which inflicts confusion for just one energy and deals 30 damage. So that can soften up the Drampa GX and make it easier for you know another knockout, maybe with Psychic, uh, Espeon GX's second attack, or maybe even just a Berserk later on down the line. It's just annoying. I mean, having my Drampa GX confused like this in the active position, it's not great. I don't have an easy way to retreat it. Finn did get the turn to Garbotox and Lock going first. 
So I'm not going to be able to stand in and get this confused Drampa out of the active position, which is a little bit tough. And I'm only playing two copies of Floatstone in my list. So the odds of finding a Floatstone off of an N to six, not exactly high, but that's pretty much the option we have to go for here. I'm going to Ultra Ball for a Zork, probably slap this Choice Band down onto one of my Pokemon as well, just to thin my deck a little bit, and then N, shuffle up and drawing six. And I would really like to draw into an energy and a float stone. Now, what's interesting is I just ultra balled away my stadium. I didn't give Finn the stadium, and there was a reason for that. I didn't want Finn to be able to power up Drampa, but now I'm looking at Oracorio GX, and uh, we got some kind words from Finn here. Finn saying he loves the deck and that uh, he was really thinking about playing it for the tournament. So super nice, Finn, uh, there. So we just got a little bit of dialogue going on in the match. Uh, he said it was his second choice for the events. And I'm letting Finn know this is uh, I love this format. I mean, the games are so good. And if you've been watching all the way through uh, this tournament experience so far, I think you could tell my enthusiasm for this format is very high. And I think that these games end up being very back and forth, very skill intensive. And uh, it's definitely a blast to play. So I highly recommend it if you have not already. Uh, the 2017 North American International Championships format, a great one to revisit if you like building old formats. So now I've got the Rainbow Energy and I've got the Oracorio, right? And if I had a stadium in play, I'd be able to deal 120 damage to that uh, Espeon GX. But uh, I discarded the stadium with the Ultra Ball. I had my reasons for doing that, so I don't necessarily uh, hate that decision. Uh, with the Rainbow Energy, I decide to go in with Zerua and give the Espeon GX a little taste of its own medicine. I love this play. Going for the Moonless Madness, right? Uh, not an often used attack, but it is an option that the deck has. For one Darkness Energy, you just confuse the defending Pokemon. And by placing uh, that damage onto Zerua, it's actually meaningful because that means that I'm going to have some benched damage if the Zerua survives the turn uh, in order to power up Drampa GX's Berserk Attack. Now, as you can see, we force Finn to remove the Psychic Energy from his own Espeon. He doesn't have the Float Stone to retreat it. He is going to take the Knockout with Tapu Lele, which definitely kind of swings that momentum back in his favor. But he does miss an energy drop by having to sacrifice one in order to retreat the Espeon. So I'm not uh, terribly bent out of shape about that. Also, Drampa acts as a very good pivot right now because it's got the Float Stone on it, which has stuck around for a turn. I love having a Pokemon with free retreat. It's great. Uh, and I have the teammates here. So since I got a Pokemon knocked out during my last turn, I can search my deck for whatever two cards I want. Now, I'm thinking I'm probably going to go for the Darkness Energy here just to use Righteous Edge. And as we can see, Finn's board is... You know, definitely has the advantage at this point. He's got two energy. I've got no energy. Uh, he's got the Garbotoxin up. But we can start to chip away at that advantage with Drampa. And that's something that I love about Drampa as a card. It allows you to swing the momentum of the match back into your favor. And as you can see, I decided to evolve up into my Zorark break with the teammates. It's a really heads up play here. I've already got the choice band in my hand. And what I'm kind of doing here is I'm baiting Finn. I'm like, all right, Finn, uh, I have now Zorark break on my bench. So if you punish my Drampa, with your Bench Drampa GX, then I am going to use teammates again with the Versus Seeker in my hand, and I am going to punish your Drampa with my Zorark Break. And that is one of the huge things about this matchup, is that even though Drampa GX is so strong, it's not just Drampa Wars. These are not just Drampa Wars, because Finn is at a huge disadvantage in these Drampa Wars, because he has to deal with the fact that my Zorark Breaks can copy Drampa. Now, this is a huge whiff for Finn. He ends, he needs to find the Float Stone in order to retreat and take that knockout with Drampa. Now, I have the Darkness Energy and the Choice Band and the Lysander. Zorark Break gonna bring up his Drampa GX fully loaded. He's about to lose three energy here, and 
and I get to take this knockout on the Drampa GX with a non-GX. This is just about game, set, and match here. Taking out a Drampa GX. It didn't even get to attack. We just talked about how Finn had two energy. He had all the energy on his board. He had the energy advantage and how quickly that evaporated. One Righteous Edge, one Lysander to bring up the Drampa, fully loaded, knock it out with a foul play on my Zorark break. And the landscape of this match has completely turned around a full 180 here. And now uh, Finnegan does not have the attackers on his bench to be able to respond to the Zorak break. He's got the Espeon GX, that Psybeam can inflict confusion, but Zorak break resists Psychic. It's not going to deal a lot of damage. And we see that Finnegan did also play that Parallel City down. It limits my bench to three Pokemon, so I had to let the Turtonator GX go. It was the least meaningful Pokemon on my side of the field. But now that there is a Stadium card in play, I'm looking at Oracorio. That Revelation Dance attack could deal 120 damage to the Espeon GX and could be something nice if I'm trying to set that Espeon up for a two-hit KO. Unfortunately, we do get Field Blower there. Finnegan identifies the choice bands as problem cards those have to go and he's going to confuse my zorak break now a zorak break with a choice band on it does not have a lot of great options to get out of the active position as you can see i have floatstone but unfortunately zorak can't wear two tools at a time so that's not an option for me to get the zorak out there's no guzma in this format so status conditions are really powerful and we see that this confusion here, I mean, I'm racking my brain. What do I do? The Zorark is confused. I can't retreat it. Zorark's retreat cost is two. So I cannot retreat the Zorark break. And this confusion really, uh, really gives me some awkward decisions to have to make. I'm considering this Ultra Ball here. I think playing the Ultra Ball is correct because I'm going to be able to uh, set up another Zorark on my bench. And I know already that getting a Zorark break into play, uh, a second Zorark break into play, will be monumental for this match. So that is my goal. And then I'm going to use the end, saving the Versus Seeker in my deck. I know that I'm going to want that Versus Seeker later to help clean up the rest of the game. I've got double colorless energy. It's not worth it to retreat the Zorark break. I think building up the Drampa is really good. And since I'm already in the lead at this point, this is one of those you know, game time decisions, right? I'm already in the re in the lead here. I won game one of the best of three series. So if I hit this attack through confusion, I pretty much cement my lead and win the series, right? And I know I'm going to win the series if I hit that attack. So that was a 50-50 risk I was willing to take. I decide to hold the double colorless energy. I don't think it's worth it to play that DCE down on the Drampa. I wanted to save the double colorless energy in case I decide to place it somewhere else. The Drampa GX already has a darkness energy attached to it. So I don't feel like I need to put that double colorless energy onto the Drampa. I wanted to see how that mind jack attack or how that foul play attempt worked out here before I uh, decided to commit that double colorless energy now missing that attack through confusion is huge that is a big momentum swinger it essentially allows finn to have two attacks in a row he side beamed i missed my attack and now he's going to be able to go in with psychic and psychic does uh or divide gx divide gx just allows finn to place 10 damage counters so he can just place those 10 damage counters onto the zorak break and completely knock it out since it goes through resistance finn was actually going to be a little bit short of knockout there only dealing 90 damage with psychic minus 20 uh because of the resistance so going for the divide gx there was a pretty heads up call now Looks like I'm maybe opting to promote this Oracorio. I don't have a way to knock out the Espeon GX. It's the weirdest thing about it, right? Uh, Berserk on Drampa GX only deals 180 damage with a choice band. So instead, I decide to promote the Oracorio. Thankfully, we top deck the choice band, which is amazing because now I get to teammates for just a basic dark and I can use that Revelation Dance attack. And I get the Zorak break too. I know I want that. And then the basic Dark Energy. And I have the Sycamore in hand as well as the DCE. So that I can just go ham next turn, draw a lot of cards. But this turn specifically, we want to conserve our resources, put the Darkness Energy onto the Oracorio Choice Band. And we're getting that Revelation Dance that we've been talking about the whole set so far. 
for 120 damage. Great, great damage output there from Oracorio for just one energy. And this Oracorio is going to be a pain for Finn to deal with. He's got uh, Tapu Lele on the bench. Tapu Lele with the double colorless energy does not knock out Oracorio. Uh, Psychic can get there. Psychic will deal, will deal 90 damage to the Oracorio, but he's probably not going to want to have to do that. Uh, Trash Alanche at this point, I think, will knock out the Oracorio. Let's see if I go to my discard pile again and maybe see how many items I have in the discard. I might be counting his discard as well because I want to see how many items does Finn have in his discard pile because I may end up having to use my Zorark break to copy his Trash Alanche. We see here, I actually did get... Yeah, I got put into a super awkward hand off this end of four. I mean, my other hand was looking phenomenal. I had the Double Colorless. I had the Sycamore. Here, I've got no energy. I've got no way to draw cards. And this could be the hand I get stuck on, right? Because all I need to do is close this game out. All I have to do is take four more prizes. I got a heavily damaged Espeon GX. I've got two great attackers, but no energy on them. Finn has the advantage of energy at this point. And I decide to go for a really clutch play here. I love this. I Lysander up the Tapu Lele GX, and I'm saying, Finn, you've got a choice ban on your Tapu Lele GX. I bet that you do not have a way to retreat this Tapu Lele GX. And if you have an energy for it, you know, then that's fine. You could retreat, but you're not going to be KOing my Drampa this turn. And I'm going to Lysander up the Tapu Lele GX. Say, you probably don't have a Float Stone. You're either going to have to retreat this thing manually and send up a damaged Espeon GX, or you're going to have to pass with the Tapu Lele active. And I decide to play my own Team Magma Secret base down, and that allows me to get damage onto my bench Tapu Lele GX, meaning that if Finn misses the attack then that means that I am going to be able to launch a fully powered Berserk attack uh, on the following turn. And you can see I'm favoring Oracorio here, going for the big wheel GX. So we're just trying to stall while I refill my hand to 10 cards, force Finn to have to play an N if he wants to disrupt me. And we'll see if Finn has a good play here. The Espeon is only dealing 90 damage right now. 90 is not going to be enough to knock out the Drampa GX. Now, the Trash Alanche with the Choice Band. I think that may end up getting there. So, if Finn has Trash Alanche Garbodor in his hand, as well as an energy to retreat the Tapu Lele GX, then he does take a knockout on my Drampa GX, but at that point, I've got a fully loaded Zorak break, and I can use Foul Play to copy Trash Alanche and kind of start trading there, and Finnegan does not have a great way to knock out my Zorak break on his board. Espeon GX does not get there, only dealing 70 damage with Psychic to a one energy Zorak break, and then I've got that Oracorio down on my bench again. I'm thinking that maybe I can use Oracorio to finish off a heavily damaged Pokemon. We see Finn does have the double colorless energy, opts to just go for the energy drive, putting me to 120 damage, and I get to keep my hand. So Finn does not have a supporter card in his hand that he wants to play at this point. I can take out the Drampa GX, or take out the Tapu Lele GX, putting me at just two prizes remaining. And then all I have to do is knock out the Espeon for game. So at this point, I'm trying to just thin my deck, try to make it so that even if I get end to four cards, I want to make sure that I have the most optimal cards remaining in my deck so that I can hit the Versus Seeker that I need for Lysander for game. I only have two Lysanders in the list. They're both in the discard pile, which means that I have to hit this one Versus Seeker in my hand in order to win the game. I've got energy in my hand, so uh, if I do get end to two cards, and thankfully we pull another Versus Seeker there off the end, if I do get end to two cards, I'm going to need a two-card combination to win the game. I need Versus Seeker for Lysander, and I need uh, energy. Unless Finn has eight Pokemon in the discard pile. If Finn has eight Pokemon in the discard pile, then I do not need Lysander, and I can just use Supernatural Dance to knock out the Espeon GX. Now, Finn is in a weird spot. He either has to take the knockout with Espeon GX, or he has to have Trash Lance Garbodor, and he has not evolved into Trash Lance Garbodor at this point. Something that we sometimes see with these Garbotoxin Garbodor decks is that the ability lock can actually do more damage to the Garbotoxin deck than it does to the opposing deck. And if Finn does not have a supporter to disrupt me right now, we see Finn does have Ultra Ball. He can get himself the Trash Lance Garbodor, 
but he needs to have a disruption card as well. He needs to disrupt my hand because my hand is huge. We used that big wheel GX and we refilled our hand to 10 cards and he has not been able to disrupt that yet. And it looks like that Ultra Ball is just going for the Trash Lance Garbodor. And if he doesn't have an N, I've got win in hand on the benched Espeon GX with a foul play to copy Psychic. That would get there. He has Rescue Stretcher, uh, and you can just imagine if the Garbodor's Garbotoxin ability was not live right now, he could Rescue Stretcher for Tapu Lele, GX, Wonder Tag, grab N, and disrupt my hand that way. Instead, he just has Professor Sycamore, and at this point, I know there's no item-based way to disrupt my hand. There's no ability-based way to disrupt my hand, and this is just the match right here. He has to go in with the Drampa GX, and I think try to use Righteous Edge to prevent me from doing anything he's counting my discard pile for sure he wants to know uh you know do i have both my float stones in the discard pile sure enough i do so since i have both float stones in the discard pile he's wagering here if i remove that double colorless energy from the drampa gx using righteous edge that means that the drampa will not be able to retreat and maybe andrew doesn't have it right uh maybe he doesn't have that double colorless energy he needs uh, for game, but sure enough, I do have it in my hand right now. So Finn just kind of weighing out the final decisions here of the match, but in this hand, I know I have it. He removes the DCE, and I'm going to send the well-played. We've got the Versus Seeker right here. I could just go get the Lysander or Kakui. We could do it this way. Oh, how fun. I'm going to Kakui and knock out the active. I've got the double colorless energy, and we berserk for 170 damage, knocking out the lightly damaged Drampa GX for game. And we're moving on to the finals of the 2017 Retro Format Tournament. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and check me out on Twitch, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday, twitch.tv slash tricky gym. If you're looking for Pokemon trading card game singles, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com. Supporting the shop at Full Grip Games directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. We're also always buying Pokemon singles. If you're looking for some extra cash, make sure to check out the Full Grip Games buy list. It's in the description below. You just send us your cards, fill out the buy list, and we'll send you the cash. Also, if you're looking for Pokemon trading card game online codes, make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. On to the finals. I'm going to be playing against Cena Galagascar in the finals in a Zorark Break Mirror. Make sure to stay tuned for that. Have a great day. Peace.